Good afternoon. It's 4.30 and boy has it come around very, very quickly. And it's Friday and it's last demo of the week. So a little bit of a breeze blowing through here, which is lovely. I was going to go upstairs because it's cooler, but then I thought I've got to trips all of the bits and pieces upstairs. So I thought, no, let's have every door open possible and keep it cool in here. So as you can see, that's blowing behind me because it's a nice little breeze. Saying that, it is a fairly warm breeze, but let's hope that you aren't all suffering too much. Blow, I've forgotten to bring my phone in. When Martin comes through at five with a glass of water today. Hello, Christine. Hello, hello. And Maxine too. Um, I need my phone, don't I, for our little giveaway. Um, hello, Anthea. Lovely to see you. And there's a lovely Lindsay. Oh, I hope you're all well. And Liz. Oh, there's Karen watching. And Tony. 30 degrees, is it, with you? Well, it was 28. Hello, Anne. Earlier this morning, but, oh, it's just, at least it's a breeze. Hello, Dorothy. And hello, Wendy. Um, which just reminded me, the other give giveaway, or the main one I'm doing, um, not today's one, the previous one, um, hello Shirley, you're sitting in the garden, yeah, and hello Alison. Now the other giveaway, the post in the group, the So Trisha Sews group, hello Sarah, I put right at the top, yes, it's totally warm, right at the top I put that it's on the So Total Trisha page, therefore you can't share it, and that's why I put it right at the top. <laughs> and um, so there were quite a few people saying, I can't, I can't share it, I can't share it. You can't in a group because a group is private. Um, but right at the very top, it does say it's on the So Totally Trisha page. And if you look above that, it says So Trisha Sews, which is where, where you actually were at the time. So yeah, there's still a chance to go and share because, yeah, I don't know when it was stopping. I can't remember now, but um, there's Ginny, a cool pint of ketchup. Oh, that sounds good. Jolly good. Hello, Sue. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Barbara. Barbara says hello to every member here. Um, hello, Christine. Jolly good. I'm glad it was. I've had none of us. I mean, obviously, you're the only ones that have had the circle rulers so far. Um, but I do have, I've had two or three that have been broken of late. And it isn't down to my packaging. It's down to the downright stupidity of some of the people that deal with the parcels on their way from me to you so um it's a little bit irritating oh there's karen there's Anne. hello and sharon and pat oh no pat i will try my absolute best to cheer you up oh this damn disease it's just or disease virus it's just going everywhere it's freezing in cumbria oh my goodness lindsay oh that's, that's that's incredible it is awful cloudy cornwall i think it said the southeast and the east and i thought well we're in central really but oh, we've got the heat haven't we sunny in torquay um hello bev and oh, Ginny's in the beer garden thought about it but i wanted to come and see you um hello jill and hello sandra hello kim Hello, Ellen. Yeah, it's very humid here, Sarah. Don't know what the temperature is, but um, I don't care, it's just hot, you know. Cold, wet and windy in southwest Scotland. They, Rena, they did say um, rain up there. You can send a bit down, I don't mind. Oh, don't worry, Cherry, we've only just started. And hello, Maria, and Lisa Marie, and Jane. Um, oh my goodness, we don't wanna know that, Sarah, do we? But I had heard that the other week. Ugh, I think, ugh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Too much going on to think about that sort of thing. And we just want it all to be back to normal, don't we? I'm sure it was too hot in the car. It'd be awful. Hello, Nita. Hello, Carolyn. Um, few, it's hot, but managed this morning with lots of, managed, did manage this morning with lots of fans. Oh, jolly good. Um, afternoon, Gina. Hot and bothered, yes. Uh, hello, Susan. Uh, it's gone windy with you. Who have I got there? Um, Susan, yeah, making a reading cushion. Lisa Marie. Oh, 
Do you saw a delivery man throw a parcel 10 yards to... Oh. Yeah, they just don't care. There is not enough care in this world at the moment. Hello, Sarah. I've thought that for so long. Um, hello, Jules. And hello, Moira. Streamy hot there. Oh, 40, you can keep your 43, Moira. Oh, I think we were supposed to be 26 to 30, something like that. Phew, 22 is fine for me. Beautiful weather in South Wales. Hello, Angela. Hello, Kathy. Oh, you're a newbie. Oh, jolly good. Welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy. We usually have a little chat to start off with. Then I do a demo. And today, the demo, um, I'm going to give away what we make. Um, I don't know if any, well, I do know somebody's notice, and that's Vivian. Um, but earlier on, as I finished the instructions, I thought, do you know what? Um, because I've got the shows this weekend, I won't do a manager's deal because I don't like to tempt you all the time. Um, but I've uploaded the um, instructions with the templates for the bag I'm going to make. And the bag I'm going to make is available in two sizes. I shall have kits on Sunday. Um, but the pattern will have both sizes in it. And I've called them Little Dor Dotty and Dorothy. So Dorothy is the bigger one and Little Dotty is the smaller one. And I did show you them when I had my massive making day last week. But I never got round to writing the instructions. So they're on the website for £5 instead of my normal six because it is brand new. But I thought I will leave this on at that price till tomorrow evening. So Saturday evening. Um, I'll take it down because as they will be on the Create and Craft shows on Sunday. So, hello Karen, hello Nita, oh, welcoming Cathy. So, yeah, lovely to have you here, Cathy. Um, usually I do this on a Wednesday afternoon at 4.30 and a Friday at 4.30, plus a thrifty Thursday on a Thursday evening at 6.30 till about 7.30. Quite often I sell fabrics then or bits and pieces, but not always, it depends what amount of time I've got following that to be able to post them all out to you. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and we have, oh, we have little groups where, well, I quite often do a mystery quilt. Um, and on this page, we have a make to swap mug rug group. Um, we do all sorts of things and we have a fair few giveaways. So watch out for that. Um, hello Shirley, hello Jane, hello Barbara, um, Alison, oh lovely, jolly good, oh you've got them all coming there. So there we are, all the welcomes. Tell you what, these ladies here are absolutely lovely because without me saying a word, they're welcoming you to our little group. Oh I've got my bra strap showing, how terrible is that? And I do apologise that I've got the same top on but I gave it a wash dried really quickly and just threw it on again today because it's nice and loose and keeps me cool. <laughs> oh Heather, there's a puddle that used to be you. Oh, 86 degrees, oh my goodness. Beverly couldn't find me. Well, I am here. Um, there, oh, Kathy Swift, welcome. Yes, so Kathy, yes, absolutely welcome. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, right, I'm, oh, this has gone too fast for me because was that Nikki's welcoming hello to all, hello. Oh, you had a whip it called Dotty. Oh, jolly good. Um, hello, Linda, hello, Sue. Yes, Dorothy, I thought, oh, I thought it was a fabulous name. Named after you, how about that? Gina, um, you have? You have, where have you been? I know you want to have a little chat, but I just haven't had time at the moment, as um, everybody knows, but um, I'm gonna be, uh, yes, I'll be busy next week as well, but I'll find a, a little, I'll find a um, point in time, because I can't just work, 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 can I? Mm. Kathy's got to mention she's on holiday in Shropshire, not sure what the temperature is, but it's boiling, <laughs> yes. Uh, hello June, uh, lovely to see you today. Hello Gail, Gail must have finished work or she's uh, looking while she's at work. Um, hello Janet, hello Elaine, welcome, welcome. We'll get there. Oh, the mug rug swap, yes indeed. 
I know, he does need to keep me hydrated. Hello, Diane, lovely to see you today. And Linda and Christine. Yeah, Barbara, the washing has dried really, really quickly. Who needs a tumble dryer when you're weather, when you've got weather like this? Um, oh, no worries, Kim, you can catch up later. Okay, oh, my arm's aching. Oops, oh, my chats have gone now. Oh, goodness, where have they gone? Oops, oh, I tried to press swipe. Oh, that's better. Um, hello, Jean. Um, hi, Lorraine. Hello, Margo. Gosh, so many people today. Hello, Jill, coming from the dog groomers. I'm sure you haven't been groomed, but your dog has. How lovely. Your towels are like cardboard, but Beverly. Oh yeah, it must have been very hot then. Very, very. Mm. Oh my goodness. Right, so, so, as I say, lots of you here. Martin, I'll, I'll start my demo now because I'm getting warmer as I even speak. I think the breeze has stopped. The doors are still open, but oh dear, oh dear. Mm. Let's pop that there. So let me show you. Um, I'm going to make the little dotty. Yes, that's right. I'm going to make the little dotty. Yeah, it's like 15 minutes to wait. Phew, I think I shall be melting. So if you see, uh, if the machine stops working, it's because um, the liquid formed has um, closed it down. So I used, oh, it's, yes, I see. I have used some V Bohem fabric because I have a lot of, I haven't really done much with it. Um, there we go. So the little bag are these ones, which are very, very easy to make. Can you see it's got a nice bulbous bottom, as I said, and that's because you probably can't see, it's got some little darts here and here and at the back as well, but the fabric disguises them. So you have got a magnetic clasp and there, and there's a fair bit of room fair bit of room so I like to make easy bags because what I'm thinking of you making or rather it's making to sell and um, just like you Christine really cute and then you have got the zipped pocket on the front love a bulbous bottom yes I know what they are and then um, what we could do as I was making I thought what you could have is a flap and I might do something don't worry Janet I could do a flap to um, reiterate the shape of the bag, but it is really, it is really, I'm gonna show you how lovely and simple to make it is. So this one across here is, let me just have a look. Oh, I haven't got my big ruler on here, have I? So six, seven, it's probably about eight inches across there. So it's not huge, but the one I'm going to make is a little bit smaller and it is really, so it'll be, It'll be great for little girls' bags, but it's also great as a dog walker's bag. And you can get your hand in both, but you can see, I'll get my hand in this one, and there's ample room. The other one, you can get your hand in, and there's not so much room at the side. But, um, it works. And because it's not a wide opening here, it does mean, oh, well, there you go, Jacqueline, you could make this too. Um, because the opening on the little dotty bag, nobody's going to get in there. Even though I put a magnetic glass, nobody's going to get in there. So, and you could make your handle as long. This is a width of fabric, so it is nice and long. And I'll show you how to do that. So, shall we begin? Shall we begin? Um, let me see if I could hang this up so we can see. Perhaps if I hang it over the top of this um, here then you can sit whoops there we go oh that should stop it blowing about as well um oh there we are oh i could do it um a little bit lower couldn't i let's see let's just pull those handles down a little bit there we are that's better so it'll probably fall down now so there it is so that you can see it um 
Yes, Jacqueline, as Lindsay says, you can make this. So here we go. What I'm going to show you, first of all, um, I ought to wait. Hello, Patricia. So I get my phone. Am I allowed to just dash off one minute? Because I do need my phone and then I can see any comments or as many as I can. Thank you, Joanne. Right, let's just move past here very carefully so that I don't knock the camera. And And then we'll sneak back in here, back to view. And I have just need to find me on here. Funnily enough, I don't get notifications at all. So, no, that is not. Oh, yes, I have it here. Oh, it's a bit slow. I'm just hanging the thing up. Right, so let's see. Whoops, no, I don't want that. Yes, I have it here. Oops. Oh, it's a bit slow. <laughs> You don't want to hear me duplicating what I've said, do you? Right. Let's see if I am there. Swipe. Oops, no. We've stopped. Let's keep going. Ugh. Come on. That's it. Uh, uh. Never mind. Never mind. We'll see what we can do. Oh, there we are, we're going again. Let's so put it up in front of. There we go. Right, right, we're here. Whoops, I'll put it in front of there. Fill it with ice cubes and plonk it on your head today. Yes. No, that was a very quick dance you had there. Right, so um, we have we have the bag handle like so. So my standard, I pressed it already, so you, you don't want to watch me pressing. Um, but it was the four inch width of fabric and the whole width of fabric. And then we have our shaped pieces. So you've got two of the outer fabric and I have already fused the wadding on the back. So I like to use H640 for this um, because I just like, it's got a bit of body, but it's nice and soft too. Hello Jan, don't worry, don't worry. Um, I also have a pocket lining which is going to be, rather than having two pieces, it's going to be folded like so to make our pocket. Um, then I have two lining pieces. There we go, so we've got the lining pieces in the same shape. And that is it. Yes, so that is all. Oh, plus a magnetic clasp, which I have over here. And we had our zip, so magnetic clasp. Hello, Anna, don't worry, and a zip. Okay, so if I put my zip there, oh, I think Martin's cooking. Oh my goodness. Hello, Tracy. Oh, thank you. Right, I'm going to dip us down and see if I can get a pretty good, oh, you can see the mess behind my machine. Um, let's see if we can get some decent shots here of what I am doing. Um, let's see. So, first thing I'm going to do Actually, I want this to come down. What's for dinner? It's chilly, actually, Beverly. But he does make a mean chilli. Oh, dear. Now, I've had to... Oops. I've had to plug in... Whoops, the days. I've plugged in the iPad because Martin's been playing word games on it. So, that's just fallen off. But there we go. That's fine. Okay. So, down here we have... Let's put that out of the way. So, what we need, first of all... Whoops, this way. Um, let me just see if I can go that way a little bit. That's better. Okay, so we'll push that out of the way. So I've got one of the pieces, one of the outer pieces, as I said, with the uh, wadding already fused on there. Yes, Beverly, it's making me feel hungry. Um, oh, dear, oh, dear. Right, so um, here we are. We then, first of all, we're going to take our pocket piece. And what I've done here is, this is the smaller bag, so it should be a little bit smaller, but that, it'll be fine. Um, on the pocket piece, which is just a long rectangular piece of fabric, I've drawn a rectangle. Can you see I've drawn a rectangle there? I've drawn it centrally, so it's the same amount of fabric on each side. 
and I have drawn, I can't remember the measurements there, but I tend to do this slightly less than half an inch wide. I think it gives a nicer finish for your zip. Um, so I've joined it at the ends and how I'm going to lay it, I lay it just below, so about an inch below the top of the fabric here. So there's the top and I'm laying it an inch below. We do want it to be straight. So I would measure across there. So I should have a little ruler, I do. So we have a little ruler here, and that is an inch wide. I'm gonna stand up, that's it. So it is well worth measuring on this occasion. So it's an inch, um, let's see if I can, whoops, no. There we are, oh no, that's a bit. No, you could see well enough, I think, as we are, okay. So I'm going to put a pin down here and a pin up here because I don't want this to move. Okay, let me take that out of the way. And what I'm going to do now is stitch around this um, rectangle. So let's see, it might be good to get in that set. So I'm going to pop that under the machine and I keep fiddling about here and I am going to stitch. Oh, there we go. So, we're, well, I usually move it to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You don't particularly for this part because we're actually going to stitch on the line. And I've made my uh, stitch length just a little bit smaller, but because we're going through wadding and um, a few, well, wadding and a cotton layer, um, I don't want to go too small a stitch but I'm just stitching across or along that line, right to that edge, and then around this corner, that's it, and then back again. So I just pivoted there. So if you leave your needle in the fabric, it really helps. Let's just move my zip away, otherwise I'm going to lose that. It just helps, whoops, whoops, that's there. It just helps um, your stitching to stay straight and where you wanted it to go. So, one more. You've got, a, oh, I'd love some cider. I would love some. So, right, I'll come back to where I started and I've sti stitched directly over the first few stitches. So, if I show you that there, I've stitched all the way around. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the middle of this rectangle. So we'll clip that little thread off first. I do have some scissors. So you could pop a seam ripper in there to start it off. But I like to fold it in half and make sure it is in half there and just do an initial clip in the middle. And then I will go in along the middle. It doesn't matter if you're a bit off central but we just clip along that central portion. And then what we do is we clip into these diagonals, into the corners diagonally. And you want to get as close as you possibly can without cutting the stitching, because this is what will give you that really, so I have gone very, very close. In actual fact, I might use my little snips here Oh, that's it does that oh have i nope i'll soon tell if i've clipped the um, stitch because when i turn it through it will that's it so what i've done there i've just cut into those diagonals now you can draw those lines but i think we've gone past that you know exactly where you're going to stitch so i have done that so we'll take the pins out and the next thing we will do is we're going to post we're going to see this as a letterbox and we're going to post that piece the whole of the pocket through the gap so it's gone through here and pull it through to the wrong side okay so once it's through we'll turn it round and what we're going to do now is we're going to flatten this out and the first thing i do at these corner pieces here i give it a tweak so I just wiggle it around at the corner. This is where you would notice, yeah, the, fab the fabric is V-Bohem. And I just, there's, 
There's 40 different fabrics in that collection. And I just happened to look and think, oh, that's really nice. So you see how I've tweaked it? I call it tweaking it. But this gives, you can see already that that's looking neat. If you haven't clipped far enough into that corner, you'll get some puckers there. And it's really hard to um, get those puckers out even by pressing. So here again, tweaky tweak. I'm just, go, I'm just doing it sort of round and round. And it's pulling the stitches into those corners. So you see, without me even pressing now, um, that looks pretty good at those edges. There's no, I'll just move it around, but there aren't any puckers, which is really good. So I must have clipped right into those corners as far as I possibly could. Okay, so I'm now just putting my iron on and all I'm doing, oops, it's not very good there. Let's put down a little bit more. That's better. All I'm doing, here comes the water, dead on five o'clock. Thank you so much, <laughs> I needed that water here it comes mm. gosh that was lovely for water but right so what we're going to do now is we're going to press this and what we want to happen is that the edge of the fabric we don't want to see the lining from the other side so the edge of the fabric is right on the edge there so I'm going to go in I should perhaps do this edge first I'm going to go in with the iron and just press here and then press around that corner and also along this top edge like so and heat to there so you can see those tiny there are some tiny little puckers but on this side but on the front they are the tiniest ones and we could actually iron those out be careful about um oh look you see what i've done don't press your um onto your interface, onto your wadding, because it melts. So very, very careful. It hasn't gone on the bottom there. So just be nice and careful. And then we'll flip that over. And you can see that is nice and neat. It is one of the easiest ways, but as long as you know all the little t tips of the trade, if you like, to get that, um, to get them to look really nice. So this I actually love for the back of a cushion. So if you don't want to do your envelope backs anymore, um, it is, oops, do that there, there. It is really nice, I'll put my hand under there. It's really nice to put your envelope, I mean your zip, on the back of a cushion. And you can just, you know, pop it about oh, a couple of inches in from each side. Nice and easy to get your pillow out to wash. So next thing we do, oh and I've got one upstairs, is... I like to use, and I haven't got one by me, which is irritating. So you can pin, obviously, um, but if you use a glue stick or double-sided fusible tape, um, it just helps to get your zip absolutely straight, which is what I've been doing. that's it I'm back I am so so naughty when it comes to um, having duplicates of things I'm I was sorting out something and I managed to, I've got five of these that I started and that's because where did I put the last one and here I've got another one hello Pamela oh missed that bit you watching from the caravan in Cornwall lovely oh and there's Mary yours keeps dropping out oh um I think it is the weather because I haven't frozen here Right, so I've got a glue stick. As I say, you could use the uh, double-sided fabric tape. Um, but what I like to do is just use this on the wrong side. So on your lining. And I just go around the edge. And, you know, it makes such a difference. So put that out of the way. So all we do now, so we've got the glue on this side. If we put our zip down... And then hover the aperture, the, the hole there, over the top. And this means you can get, so I've got the zip then, with the zip coil, exactly in the middle. Because as the zip's going to be on the front, you want it to be 
as nice as it possibly can be. So I've got a long bit. I love to use a bigger zip because we don't have to worry about making it fit exactly. We've got the zipper pull that's in the reset in the opening. So make sure that that is in there because um, you don't want the zipper pull hanging off the edge. Otherwise, you'll have no zip in the center. OK, so you can put an extra pin there just to hold it if you like. But that should be good enough. You can also press it and that holds it a little bit firmer. But now I'm going to just take that to the machine and we are going to stitch that round. So you could put, I'll tell you what I will do rather than moving my, I've got this lovely, I've got this lovely little zipper foot. So this is a tiny one. Instead of using, oh, I do like, no, I do like using that though to give me a really good finish. Um, no, we'll use this just to, um, so most of you will probably put a zipper foot on. So make sure my needle is in the right place. That is going to come down there. So, oh, so the heat's probably not enjoying this. I'm just going to iron over the back because that, I could feel it move. And it probably is because the heat is not allowing. There we are. We'll just hold that in place. I can see it. Yes, I can see that's okay. So I'm just going to put that under. I've got my zipper foot on and make sure that's okay. And I'm going to start, I'm not going to start right um, at one end because I like to come round the edge and I'm just going to put the zipper foot down. Now I always, when I'm using a um, zipper foot, I always do the first, the very first bit of stitching. I drop the needle into the fabric, make sure it's not going to hit the foot. No, that isn't. That's right. Yes. Okay. So I'm quite close. I might move that one more way. Um, let's just see. No, I shouldn't have done that. Let's just take that away. So I can see when I put the um, needle down, it moved. Okay, so we'll just go down. Oh no, it likes to press the foot down. And up, that's better. Okay, so I'm just going to take that back under here. And that's it. So we're watching the, um, we're keeping the zipper foot there so that it is to give me a nice straight line of stitching and fabric glue is really useful it is and wadding in place so i've been using the fusible wadding as well which always helps okay so when we come to the corner make sure you just go a little bit past i've gone too much past there let's just go back one step right so we'll just reverse one oh, we'll reverse two okay I just want it to be the same the whole way around. And then when you're going over the zip coil, just go a little bit more slowly. There we are. And then come out the other side exactly the same distance away. So there we are. And I'm still checking that my zip is still nicely central there. So we'll just proceed our way along here. I haven't got as much control. Hello, Jean. Yes, I have got so line ones. Oh, I have got so line glue pens. The so line ones are the refillable ones. So the one I've used there is the um, oh, what make was it? Easy, easy so um, ones, which are not refillable. They are disposable ones. Uh, but the so line I do do. They've got a slightly finer tip. Um, and you get a refill in there as well. So I think they're on the website actually. Okay, so I've just gone all the way around. And when I've got back to the beginning, I've just gone over, there we are. So we have gone over there, not too bad, not too bad at all. So it's, it's helped that having that glue there has kept it in place. So let me just, so all I'm going to do now is I am going to trim away, um, yes, the small, the small zipper foot I have got, I'm going to put my other one back on now, but I've got the standard one, 
and look you can see this is what um juki can you see how much dinkier it is so here is my standard foot and there is the baby one so it sits on top it's about half the size really good so i didn't have to lift my um or pull the zipper pull away um but <laughs> anybody who think i'm a professional well i'm not really i just i learned these tricks from my mum and then you pick up little bits every you know from where whether you go to workshops or somebody tells you and as i say i just like to show you so i've clipped those pieces off those end pieces um, I like to show you whatever I've learned, why shouldn't I share that with you? And so that you can have an easy life as well, because we all like easy ways of doing things. So I'm going back to my quarter of an inch seam allowance now. There we go. And we have got now our pocket zip. There's the right side. Here's the wrong side. So we're going to fold the pocket up and we'll align this top edge here. So I'm just folding that and lining that up. We can put a pin in along here as well because we are going to stitch around here, but just line that up carefully. And we're just gonna do, we don't need to do the folded edge, which is along the bottom. So we're gonna go up a side, across the top and down the other side. So when we're doing this, so we'll start at the fold. So all we need to do is actually pull this the outer bag away. So I've just folded that back and, oh, there we are. I folded that back. So all I'm going to do is stitch along this edge here. This edge has got a bit of frayed fabric. So put the foot down. Okay. Oh, oh, there we are. So I'll just reverse there because we don't like holes in our pockets. And I can take that pin out. So when I've got two, the top edge all I'm going to do now is there's the top edge I'm going to push that piece out of the way again so I'm now just I've just got my fabric making sure that that is all still lined up and stitch across there and then when we get to this corner we're going to lift this piece and tuck that out of the way as well so I've got that all tucked underneath and I have just got the fabric of the pocket. So again, get to the end, just reverse that. Okay, in the nook. Wow, that's lovely. That's what I like to hear that. Okay, so now we've got our pocket in there, and there is our bag. So there's our bag front. Right, so the next bit we're going to do is we're going to deal with these little pieces here, these, these holes. So this is part of the template, part of the style of the bag. And all we're going to do is make darts so anybody... Oh, is it Bridget's birthday? Happy birthday, Bridget. Missed that. Happy, happy birthday. Um, yeah, we're going to fold these right sides together. So at the pointed end, so line it up at that bottom edge, like so. And then just make sure that it's all lined up along there. And I'm going to stitch along here. And we go past that point... Otherwise, it will make, if we just stopped there, it would make a, a funny, um, it's like with darts, let me show you. We need to carry on just, so I'll reverse at the beginning and keep that quarter of an inch seam allowance and then keep that seam allowance and just keep stitching all the way to the point. You can't really see that very well. And then when I get to the edge there, I reverse into the seam allowance. I don't reverse back down the stitches. Right, let's just show you if you can see this here. So it is like a dart. So I've stitched all the way down here, but can you see I've reversed? Um, is it hard to see? I've reversed in this bit, which is the seam allowance here. And my stitching is here. It's a little bit hard to see. Oh no, I can see it now, it's near my finger. So I haven't reversed up the stitching that I stitched down. Oh, it's Marion's birthday. Happy birthday, Marion. Um, but I reversed in this seam allowance, so it won't show. So I'm going to do exactly the same then with the other piece. So I'm going to fold that in half, right sides together. And we will stitch along this edge. 
So press it down and there we go. And straight up here, as I said, and past our point and then back down into the seam allowance. Okay. So there, that's what gives us our bulbous look. Can you see that just comes out a little bit there? Now I'm going to do the same again with, I've got my other piece here and actually I'm just going to take that back out again. There we go. And let's just move this in. Dum -de -dum -de -dum there. That's perhaps a bit better. Oops, that's falling. Wooey. Right, so I've got my second piece here and all I'm going to do, right sides together again and we will do this one as well. Keep pressing my foot down without, um, that's it, without actually using the machine. So again, up to the point and reverse and cut. And then similarly here on the other side, right sides together. It's just um, a very easy way to give the your bag, make it give it a little bit of a different look. You can reverse the beginning if you want to. I don't always because there isn't much stress gets to that point. Okay, so we've reversed a bit there. So there then is my second side. So again, you can see that a little bit like a bra, isn't it? Okay, so having got my two pieces now, I'm going to put them right sides together match them at the top there we'll pop a pin just to hold that and then we're going to match i like to match my um where my uh, darts are so i'm just matching those there and i just send one one way one the other just like when we are nesting patchwork just pop a pin in there and then the same on the other side we'll trim that thread in a minute so just if we can get those matching nicely if anybody looks your um your darts will match at the front and the back so there we have it all the way around it's like your dummy yeah <laughs> me too so um we can now take that pin out and we reverse at the top and we will just stitch all the way around the curve and I'm just doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we will stitch around there. Make sure the bottom is all nice and even. And just around that corner, that bend, that curve. <laughs> and then we'll just pull that fabric over. Just make sure they're all aligned like so. We've got that little bit of our pocket there but that doesn't matter and to the top and we'll just reverse at the top oh you lost me did you well I am still here okay so there we have it now I'm just going to push that through to the right side and oh, we've got a few threads there we can pull it up so put my hand in there I just rub, rub my finger around those outer edges just to keep that nice curve. And there you can see we have our dinky little one. So next thing to do. So we've completed uh, the outer here. So we now need to do the bag handle. So with bag handles, as I was saying, it's a four inch wide um, strip of fabric which the first thing I do is fold it in half wrong sides together like so and press then I open it out and fold the raw edge to that center crease and on the other side and then fold it over and press both ways now I like this is totally optional but I like to put sometimes a little bit of wadding in the side here so let's just move that down what I do is cut a lovely big bit of, or a length of wadding, or I sometimes join them. So I've got a long bit here, and I just open up, and I should be trimming that selvage off. So I open up my, um, my strap, and I just tuck 
the wadding inside here. So because this is the end up an inch wide, I cut my wadding a little bit narrower. So anything three quarters of an inch, um, seven eighths, because when this is folded, it does take up a little bit of room. So what I'm gonna do, rather than put it all in to begin with, I will put it in as I go along. So you can see I've got my wadding tucked in there and then I'm gonna fold this over so it's all enclosed in between. So back to the machine. Um, and I always start with the open edge there. I stitch down there first of all. So an eighth of an inch I usually go from the edge and I usually turn my stitch length up higher to probably three. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this over as I go. So I'm just pulling that in and then stitching down. And I, there's a place on my foot which I watch out for to give me the eighth of an inch. So it is probably easier or quicker if you've got this all folded and enclosed before we start. Ah, yes. Coordinating fabric. You may be best to wait till all the demos so it's just can always keep up with the comments. Yeah, you yeah, it would probably be better. I'm tr yeah, I'm trying to have a look as I go, but I'm not perfect. I'm missing some of the things. But if you if you think of your um, questions at the end otherwise I have to scroll back through and I take forever watching and missing out comments as well so yeah by all means have a little chatter amongst yourselves while I'm doing this but you can see what I'm doing I'm just pulling that over so that I am practically getting um, the edges totally on the edge now you see I'm coming to the end here um, of my wadding. So I've got an extra little bit, just move that over a little bit. So I've got an extra little bit, which is that I'm going to fit in in a moment. So I'm gonna take this bit here and I'm just gonna pop it in there. And what I'll do here is I'll just put a pin so I'm, oh, and drop it and just, so that holds in place. So I'm just putting my finger in there. Yeah, padded thread. I, I just like the look of them. It just, um, it just make, yeah, they, they just look um, that little bit better that, as if you've um, really tried. However, if I'm using canvas fabric, I very rarely do because the canvas is a bit weightier. Oh, hi Yvonne, lovely to see you. And we're nearly at the end now. And once I'm at the end, the other side is a breeze because obviously all the edges are aligned anyway. And this is why I always do the open edge before I do, right. So I don't cut my threads there. What I do is I just stitch across. Um, oh, you just got back from hospital, Josie. I hope you're feeling okay apart from um, your wrist, I know. So I turn round and then I can just whiz back down here. So can you see what we're doing there? All right, you can see my left hand is actually holding or I'm letting the strap pass by my finger so that it keeps it straight. I've got my pedal down full power and hopefully I'm going to have a really nice straight strap. Okay, so there it is. Oh, my knee is aching. So what I'll do now is I'm going to trim that off because I don't want the selvage there. But what I've taken to doing of late, I actually stitch right down the middle as well. I just like the look of it. So I will, if you've got your foot, I mean your your yes your foot on or your needle position in the middle you can just gauge that this is going right down the middle so again i'm just going to stitch and you can't well i hope you won't be able to tell that i might wobble a little bit but i just like having this third 
So you could, Sonic fell on the floor. You could have a five, you could put another one in between. It's just the easiest way to break down straight stitching is by going down the center. Oh, the lovely breeze. Everything's blowing. There we are. Okay, so that's what I've done. I've just stitched down the middle. Um, you've just done this technique and I does. Yes, well done, Nikki. Okay, so there we have our handle. So I may as well deal with this now. So while we've got it, I'm going to put the handle one end at the side and I look at one side rather, I look for the seam and just centre that um, so that the handle is over the seam centrally. Then I'll go round to the other end, making sure I don't twist it. Oops, which I have there. Let's just hold that. I usually hold it. That's it. So I'm holding that there, knowing that that's going to go on the other side and centrally there as well. I like to have two pins because that way I know my handle is secure. If you only put one in, it can slip at an angle when you're stitching around the top and then you've got half your handle hanging out. And there's nothing worse than having to unpick the top just because the handle's coming out. Okay, so we've got that ready after we've done, um, who's feeling poorly? Oh, that's um, Josie, yeah. Okay, so we're going on to our um, lining pieces now. So I'm gonna do exactly the same, and I'm going to, uh, I look nice and cool. Well, we have got a breeze in here, I can feel. Um, so what I'm doing is just lining these up, these darts up, and again, I'm going to go under the machine. Oh, we'll go down there, that's it. And this time I'm going back to my quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to a short stitch length because I want my I want my lining to be nice and firm. There we go. And then so with your because the lining is the same colour, just make sure we've got a dart here that you don't go like that because you're gonna have a raw edge on that one and not there. So just make sure you Fold that the right way, otherwise, as I say, you will get, um, you'll find you've got one dart that's correct and one that is in, has got the raw edges showing. So we're just going back up to there and then just reverse into that seam. You couldn't work out if it was here on the tennis. Oh, oh, thank you, Josie. It is nice and cool. So there you can see are my darts on there. So we're going to do the same with the other piece and we're just going to place those right sides together. So if this were patterned, it would still be right sides together because you want all of your all of your raw edges to be on the wrong side of the fabric. Just do that one. And then if you start with the right hand one, you automatically go and you've got your raw edge, you automatically go to the next one. Oh, we're getting a lovely breeze up here. So it does feel not too bad. Okay. So just back again in there, just to finish that off. So now we have our two lining pieces. And guess what we're going to do now? We are going to put our lining pieces right sides together. So there are my darts, no raw edges. I'm going to put them right sides together and just finger press down here. And I like to put my darts um, lining up. So we'll put a pin just here and then pin around the edge if you like to, or just line it up as you go. So I'm just going to pop that under here and we will reverse there and we will carry on around our curve. And, oh, what am I doing? Thought I was running out of them. No, we're fine. Didn't sound right there. Okay, so what? Oh no, I've broken my thread. That's why. So that's gone well up. Let's see if I can pull it. Did that to me yesterday, didn't it? Okay. So I don't usually like to pull my thread 
back up through, but oh, let's go up. Um, I'll put that down. Needle up. Um, but I had to because there was no end showing. Okay. Let's just put that. Oh no, that's up. Right, I've got my. Just thread that. There we go. So I've threaded my needle and we'll just carry on under there so i'm just going over where i thought we've got now with we do are going to leave a gap in our base so i just go over the dot by about half an inch no more um because we need as big a gap as we can for turning so then i'll go to the other side and just line up that dot there as well and then I will start about half an inch to the other side. So I'm just using a, an on the spot stitch rather than reversing because it's easy. And then just go around the curve, hold the other end so that you can then just push that so they all line up, all the raw edges align. And round we go. We'll do a little on the spot there. Okay, so now we have our lining, not much more to do, but we need to put a magnetic clasp. So leave the right side on the inside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this top edge so that they match. And then about, where are we there? About an inch or so down, all oh, those hearts. <laughs> Who's keeping all the hearts, that's lovely. So I'm just finger pressing there or nail pressing so I can see a little crease and I'm going to put a pin in that crease now that is where my magnetic clasp is going to go so what I'm going to do here while it's still together so this is something you may or may not do but I was doing it today because I like to do things quickly um, I have my magnetic clasps which if you've seen them before they have two little washers okay and what I would normally do and but I've got used to wear those little slits so where these two vertical holes are you'd make a little mark so you'd put this on your I wonder if that goes through there oh not quite you'd put that on your fabric make a little mark in those um, holes and then you'd go in with your seam ripper now what I've done because I want them to match up I'm going to go, I'm going to use my seam ripper to make small slits each side and I'm going through both fabrics. That way, so you can perhaps just see, very little, very little slits gone through both sides so that when I put my prongs in here, I know they're going to fit, they're going to be in exactly the right place. So now I can take that pin out, open this up here and I can see this one. So I'm gonna put one piece with the prongs here are going into both of those. There we go. Now, the other thing which, let me see if I can find, I like to put, because that is going against, um, because um, those prongs are going against a little, or um, just standard cotton fabric, I like to put a little bit of um, wadding over those prongs. Let's see if it will go through. I bet it won't. Um, so I'll just clip a little hole in there. And I'll pick this up in a minute so that you can see. Um, you normally cut a couple of little slits in your wadding so it just fits over. See that one's fitting over there. I'm just doing that now. You probably can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just making these little holes and that will blow away, I'm sure. So I've put the wadding over the prongs. Then I'm going to get my washer, lay that over the top, and then I'm just going to splay these outwards. Now, some are harder than others, but it just means that I've got some wadding underneath there. It's protecting the cotton fabric. So having done one piece, we're now going to do exactly the same with the other side. So I've got my second piece of magnetic clasp and I'm just going to 
push the prongs in those little holes I made and where has my here it is so this is what I should have done earlier so just a little slit just like we did earlier into the wadding and then I'm going to oh, magnetic class working already then I'm going to put the um, wadding over the top through those holes that I carefully made and get my other washer place them on the top and just splay those outwards like so so there now you can see those two magnetic parts when we put them together they are perfectly in the right place can you see how that lines up and that was because I slipped through both sides at the same time okay so we've got that done so now <laughs> to pull them apart gosh they're strong oh that's broken my nail oh there we are that oh dear put it back together again okay so we've taken them apart we're now going to pop the outer bag with the handles on into our lining now what I like to do here is first of all take the other end of my handle right and I'm going to put the handle in here first of all and I'm going to pull it out the bottom so out of that gap so I'm pulling the handle out here so before it comes to the rest of the bag I can then fold the rest of the bag in half and that pushes in really nicely okay and you can pull the handle and then it pulls the rest of the bag down and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my side seam here with the handle which is also central so you can just look both sides and just to see that those sides uh, side seams are lining up then with your pins here take it out and repin through both layers like so then swivel to the other side and again we're looking at that side seam here and align that with the center you can see there the pins are there the seams are there hold grab hold of it take your pin out and place it back in and then you can see that sort of push that down pull that down a little bit more and we can put another pin here so that now fits the top edge and let's just hold that like so and this one we'll just pull that up a little bit so the top edge lines up as well now because this is a smaller opening to the top um, it won't go over a free arm well it won't go over mine so what we do is we just put it this way down and you won't be able to see me stitching but we're going to stitch along this edge here and I've got a little um, tip as to how so we're stitching what looks that appears to be the inside and let's just stitch so I'll just take that pin out just make sure the um, the lining and the outer fabric is still lined up and just carry on stitching around here and you just keep moving the top edge of the bag round like so Oops, let's just move that over and as we come to a pin so this is where the handle is just pull that out just before we get to it so the handle is nicely um, secured and then just move that around and carry on a little bit more oh good good Liz these are just little things which, you know, they're not the be all and end all, but, you know, I think of you in my days gone by, when I used to make this sort of thing to make or sell, you know, I wanted them to be quick, but I'd also wanted them to still look as good as if I'd taken hours over it. Because at the end of the day, the time spent is your hourly rate. So I've gone all the way around there. So I've stitched all the way around the top. Let's just clip a little bit of those threads off there. So, you know, if you can get the best out of the little bits and pieces that I do, that is just great. Okay, so all of another thread there. Right, that's gone. So now we have our bag. So we're gonna turn it to the right side now. So through the gap in the bottom, 
which is why we just went past the darts and left as big a gap as we could. And just check that the top is all secure and you haven't got any gaps there because the fabric slipped. But no, that looks fine. So I like to actually close this up now. So this is the lining. So I just run my fingers around those edges just to make sure they are stitched as well. And then when it comes to the opening, so I think I did this only the other day, just fold that in. So I'm holding that open with my little finger and my ring finger. And I'm just running my nail, which they're not very good, um, along that top edge, just, just so I'm creasing it. It just means, so about a quarter of an inch, and what uh, it means I don't have to go to the iron to press this but it means they should line up a lot better. So now I can tuck those in like so, and it's almost a straight edge. It's not a curve here. We've gone round from the dart and there's not a curve. There we are. So then you see how that lines up really nicely. And I'm gonna start from where it's already stitched together and go just past it, because I always think it looks so much better um, uh, if it's stitched the whole way across and also I've taken I said before I've taken to using that stitching on the spot because rather than reversing at the beginning and the end it just is so I'll just on the spot there and then you just have one little pair of there we go one little pair of um, threads which we're just going to trim away. And there's like a little knot at the end there. But it's really a quite a neat knot. So now we're going to push that into, I better do it carefully as I'm giving this away. So, in fact, I might, I'll give the bigger one away. Or I might give them both away. Shall we give them both away? What do you think? Uh, oh, you just made the tissue holder, uh, Shirley. They are a fab make. Sorry, I'm just pushing my fingers down here just to push the fabric around the lining and nearly finished now. So I'm just going to top stitch. So here is another little tip. Now, quite often, have all machines got the stitching on the spot? I think a lot do. It's just a little dot on a button. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do now, you saw how when we put the, had the things wrong sides together and we put them round, top stitching around the top here is going to, it's going to be hard, isn't it? Because you would put this down like this and this is all sticking up. So if we want to um, top stitch onto the outer fabric, what I do now, having pushed that all in, I'm going to pull that all out the other way. Okay. Right. So I'm pulling it, I'm pushed it all to the wrong side. Now I've got my top here. Now I'm going to stitch on this inside edge, which is much easier, just like we did when we put it together. And I'm going to stitch like so. So let me just get this because we're nearly, nearly done. So this was it. It's hard for you to see in here, but all I'm going to do now is stitch around this top edge. So let's do a little stitch there. So about an eighth of an inch from the top. And then like we did before, just pull that round so we've got a nice straight edge. And just carry on that round. Nice straight edge. And you just keep pulling it. You just keep manipulating it. So you've got a bit more. Yep. Oh, you like those tips too. There we go. So, there we go. Have to have another look. Okay, yeah. If it, As I say, it is a little dot on your machine. Right. So we're nearly round the whole way and we are nearly ready. I wish I had a proper TV camera so that you could see right in here. 
but we are nearly there. Oops, that caught that a little bit. We are nearly there, and I am just on the last bit. So I've just got to uh, the beginning again, and I've just stitched over. Okay, the first few stitches. Now, looking here, you can't actually see, well, apart from that little thread. No, that's on the design. You can't see where I started and stopped, which is what we want. So now, just grab hold of the bottom, pull it out to the right side again. Because I held on to the lining, it's still pushed into there like so. And put that magnetic clasp together. And there we have the little bag. Oh, who's sending stars? Oh, that's it. Okay. Oh, thank you, Anna. I love where, you know, if I'm showing you something new or that you hadn't thought of before, it is fabulous. Love it. Okay. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to scroll down these comments, see if I can, um, I'll whiz up them up and down and I'm going, that's it. Oh, look at, oh, look at all these comments. So I'm going to whiz right to the end and then I'm going to stop in a minute. So it's got to there and right, let's see, here we go, there. Oh, Sue Robinson. Sue Robinson is the first one. I'm going to do two. So let's see, and I'm going to whiz it up this way again. Okay, and stop. Oh, there's, and Sandra Collis. So Sandra Collis, if you're still there, and Sue Robinson, you have both got one of the bags. So activate a stars party, what? <laughs> okay, ladies, so I will get these in the post to you um oh thank you let's see if we can take this down without pulling the box off that's it so we have so i just wanted to show you the difference in size they're similar very similar but there's the little one as opposed to the bigger one but as i say so sandra collis and sue robinson you'll have one of these winging your way to me. So if you, thank you all for watching. Um, it's really lovely um, to have your company all afternoon. I'll do this again. So you'll all get a turn and I'd love to give you all one to be honest, but um, I'll do some more demos as we go along. And what I'll do is I will give away the, um, the make. So, Oh, that's brilliant. Lindsay's taken those note of those names, which means that if I forget, she'll know. Thank you, Lindsay. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. Oh, Sue is there. Can't believe it. <laughs> well, I just scrolled away. The PDF for one price of £5 has got both sizes in. So it is very, very, well, it's the same way to make both. Um, yes, both sizes on there. The only difference will be, um, there's a slight difference in cutting sizes, obviously, and the zip is zip length here is slightly shorter on the smaller one than the long one, but you can get away with the same zip size for both of them. So yeah, it is quite, you know, in, in other places they will be 9.99 each. So yeah, it is quite um, a bargain. So. They are instant downloads, so you will have either on the PayPal. It's, it's a pattern on my website just until tomorrow evening, Saturday evening. It's called Little Dotty and Dorothy Bag. So look, just search for Little... It's in the instruction packs. So it's probably very end in the bag section. Um, little Dotty and Dorothy Bag. It is £5. It ha will have two templates, one for the small one, one for the bigger one. Um, it would normally be six. If you're looking for kits, I have got them on the shows on Sunday on Create and Craft at 7 and 11. There are, in the bigger one, there's six different fabrics and they're all quite lovely. And there are, th on the smaller one, there's three. Um, yes, that would be lovely, please, um, Lindsay. I didn't get around to saying that. 
if both Sandra and Sue could email me with your addresses. I think I might know Sue's. Why would I know Sue's? Ah, oh, bless. Oh, that is lovely, Sue. Um, oh, so that was, well, that was just fate, wasn't it? It was just purely. So, um, yeah, send me your addresses, please, to trishaablett at hotmail.com um, and then I'll get them out during the week or as soon as I can. Yes, see you all on the next Trisha Sewing Adventure. Yes, we are having an adventure, aren't we? So, um, I don't know if there were any questions. I've Oh, I know, I'm only about five minutes over the usual. Very apt win, wasn't it? So, um, duh, duh, duh. I thought Barbara was perhaps asking a question earlier. You would love this more. Oh, right, okay. Right, so Sandra can have the small one and Sue can have the slightly larger one. Thank you. Right, and to see what lovely people. Um, they're all saying congratulations. I know they would have liked to have won too, but there's always the giveaway on the website. So on the, no, not the website, on the So Totally Trisha page. Um, for winning those five, which are about five by four when they're opened out and, and pressed. Um, and all you need to do is like and share. And then I'm going to get Martin to give me a number. And whatever number comment that is, he will. He hasn't done it yet. Um, and he won't know anything about it because he just does what I say. You say, write down a number between one and however many. And there's been loads of you, at least 140 shares, which is fantastic. And I thank you so much. Just like I thank you so much today for joining me. So um, I will love you and leave you, as I usually say. Um, I hope the weather's cooling down a little bit. I'm still a little bit warm, but there is a nice breeze and I hope it's decent with you too. Oh, thank you, Sue. And, oh, perhaps I've been, um, oh, there we are. Would it hold a mobile phone? Absolutely would. Yep. Shall I show you? Let's just, how about that? It is perfect. It is perfect. So I'll show you where it gets to. Can you just see? Oops, no, let me show you that way. There. So it's about two inches from the top. Oh, that's great. Great. Um, this, this is the small one. So, um, yeah, absolutely does. Absolutely. Right. Um, yeah. Enjoy yourselves this weekend. Hopefully you'll be able to join me at 7 and 11 on Sunday. See what other bits and pieces I have as well. I have got the um, more rulers, which have all got to be packed, because I haven't done that yet. So the circular rulers, um, I think there's a few on the website, but not loads. Um, but I will have some more coming if, um, if I sell them all, because I can always get some more, more uh, made up. So, yes, can't think of anything else. If anything else springs to mind, I will um, pop it onto the Soto Trisha page and in the group. Oh, thank you, Angela. Um, yes, I did, Beverly. And I haven't got gold and I only do one inch bits and pieces. I meant to um, ring you early this morning, not ring you, email you even. But I was working on getting this bag done and then getting the next one ready and doing the instructions and forgot. So um, I will respond to you very, very shortly. Um, absolutely joining you. Oh yes, that's what you miss. So you're absolutely joining. Lovely. Jolly good. Um, and also on the Sunday morning, oh, I've got Catherine. That's what I, Lindsay usually asks me who have we got, but she didn't ask me today unless I missed it. I've got Catherine Storrock for both. Yes. So that's really, really nice. So haven't worked with Catherine for a long time. And I'm sure we shall have a little giggle together. Um, so, yes, join me then. And um, we'll see where we go from there. Thank you, Nikki. Um, yeah, that's what I was, was going to say. I thought, what was I going to say? Um, send an email in or two. Or any bags that you've made, if you want to show them off. Um, see what you can do. And send an email to, to studio at creatingcraft.com. That's the one. 
yeah she is lovely 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 so enjoy your weekends lovely ladies and i will see you i will see you next wednesday because that's when i'm announcing the giveaway winner um so that will also close i'll stop comments on saturday evening um and then i'll choose a winner and well, martin will choose the winner he will give me a number he won't know who it is but we'll do that on wednesday so i'll be with you then come rain or shine it's bound not to be as hot as this um but yes thanks for your company and i will speak to you soon bye for now